Mind-Body Skills Mindfulness is the attention training to cultivate qualities of concentration, clarity, and equanimity. The common thread connecting all other skills. While relaxation is a technique to elicit the relaxation response in mind and body. Yoga is the movement and breathing strategies to synchronize mind and body and release tension. Positive psychology practices to cultivate and strengthen positive mind or emotional states. Resiliency training is a technique for balancing the nervous system, processing trauma, and strengthening the resilient zone. So now we will focus on mindfulness, which means paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. That's according to John Kabat-Zinn. Regular practice cultivate three core skills, that is concentration, the ability to focus and stabilize one's attention, then sensory clarity, the ability to keep track of the components of sensory experience as they arise in various combinations, moment by moment. For equanimity, the ability to be with experience with an attitude of gentle matter of factness. Mindfulness training techniques, there are many techniques. It depends on the teacher and tradition. There's the restrictive or open attention and noting option. For the beginner practices, it focuses on restrictive focus such as breathe meditation that you can actually uh, listen in one of my videos. It develops, strengthens core skills of concentration, clarity, and equanimity. Intermediate or advanced practices open awareness to increasing amount of sensory experience such as cho choiceless awareness, formal and informal practices. So these are the mindfulness training techniques. In the 19th century, we go in with the history of mindfulness. It was used to translate the Pali word sati. Pali is the canonical language of Theravada, a form of Buddhism found in Southeast Asia. Establishing mindfulness is a primary practice of Theravada Buddhism. It is said to lead to insight into the true nature of self and reality. Mindfulness arrives in the West in the 60s and 70s. Westerners began going to the Southeast Asia to learn mindfulness practice and they brought those those practices back to the West and began to teach them within the framework of Buddhism. In the 80s and 90s, it was discovered that those practices could be extracted from Buddhism and the cultural matrix of Asia and used within a secular context. Secular mindfulness Mindfulness awareness practices started to be used within a secular context to develop useful attentional skills. These practices became even more prevalent in clinical settings for pain management, addiction recovery, stress reduction, and as an ad adjunct to psychotherapy. It is being understood that mindful awareness is a cultivatable skill with broad applications through all aspects of society, including education, prison system, politics, business, and even the training of soldiers. In Catholic view, grounding mindfulness practice in a true anthropology, the true nature of the human person. A true anthropology understands that true human beings are a union of body and spirit made for eternal union with God, who is the true God, true good and beautiful mindfulness is a non-judgmental awareness of the present moment in the material world we are limited to processing reality in time the presence of god is hidden from our senses but when we focus on the present moment we can have a sense of being present with the reality of where god exists that's why it is called the sacrament of the present moment 
The present moment is when an experience of encounter with God who is invisible is possible. That's for the Catholic view. Do you know the benefits of mindfulness? If you don't, then you will discover that it changes the brain in positive ways. So we will learn now how it changes the brain. As you can see here in the picture, the science of meditation. So mindfulness involves six neuropsychological processes that lead to a person's meditative state of self-awareness. That is not attachment and decentering, letting go of the ego, the intention and motivation, the attention regulation, changing behaviors or attitudes, the emotion regulation, the sense of empathy for others. So that shows how the brain changes in positive ways with meditation. Also, it's about overcoming fear and anger. Recent research in neuroscience shows that we have the power to influence our brains. When we think certain thoughts, it strengthens those neural circuits. So self-directed neuroplasticity. It nurtures positive states of mind to strengthen and build those neural networks. So make happiness a habit. The brain is like a muscle that we can build through practicing skills. Meditation affects our brain in a positive way through impulse regulation, emotional awareness, compassion, and empathy, forgiveness. There is evidence with regards to compassion cultivation training in Stanford University School of Medicine. So mindfulness helps our brain brains and balance the nervous system so you can see here the stress response in the body where amygdala controlled during the stress condition so here you can see the neurotransmitters dopamine the body has stress response for the central nervous system Perception is narrowed, there is imprecise memory, block learning, there is fight or flight response, there is a muscular um, tension ready for action, the jaws clench, the body braces for action. For the autonomic nervous system, there is increased heart rate, so there is increase also of blood pressure, the oxygen need of the body also increases, and the breath breathing rate increases, respiratory rate. Um, also, the palms and the face sweat, the blood sugar increases, take note of this, adrenaline flows, and there is difference when you are in a relaxed state, especially in the prefrontal cortex, wherein there is um, decision-making, regulation of emotion, and others. The relaxation response is a physical state of deep rest that changes the physical and emotional response to stress. And the op opposite of the fight or flight response. We need this now. Mindfulness improves self-regulation. Okay, in our resilience zone, we have the best capacity for flexibility and adaptability in mind, body, and spirit. So if there is release of stress, mindfulness helps deepen the resilience zone. What happens if you are in the stress state? So there is stressful traumatic event or stressful triggers and you have this hyper arousal state the hyperactivity hyper vigilance anxiety and panic rage so this happen what happens in the resilient zone so let's practice i have actually prepared a video about uh, breathing meditation that you can practice these are the steps but you can focus on the breathing meditation video uh, while listening to that in my separate video
You can also have these mindful pauses wherein you, it takes 1 to 5 minutes. Practice slowing down, feeling the body, breathing more fully, and then let go. You can set aside 5 to 30 minutes meditation, yoga, art, and other mindful activity. So surround yourself with support. Get books, audio, phone apps. Take mind body class and do meditation retreat. So thank you for listening and if it helps, please subscribe to my channel. God bless. Thank you.